Welcome to season three of the Self Care 101 podcast. This season is all about creating an extraordinary life. We'll be diving into what makes an extraordinary life with solo shows and incredible guests, providing insight, inspiration, and tips to help you cultivate more of what you want from your extraordinary life. Be ready for inspiration overload and an epic season for growth. Hello, it is season three, episode 111. I know, it's been a minute. How are you doing? Firstly, I am sincerely sorry for not recording shows these past few months. I've basically been going through some stuff which I'm going to be sharing with you today so that hopefully if you're feeling like something needs to change, I can help you navigate the level up when it comes knocking. Because let me tell you this, that level up is not as clear cut as we might think. You know, that thing about growth and stepping out, stepping up. And when it does come knocking, I think it's really important to know what those signs are because I read a quote recently and it said something about, you know, when you get really scared, that's the moment to keep going, not to give up because that is where the change happens. So I want to go into that a little bit today. So I'm going to be sharing a couple of updates. Now, when I said I was going to share a couple of updates, when I was writing my show notes, I pretty much put everything in. So (laughs) I'm going to share some of the things that have been going on these past few months with me in a bid to create some tips to help you finish this year strong, especially if you feel like something needs to change. God, I have missed you. I hope you're still listening. I really hope you're still listening. And I can't wait to connect with you again. And my lovely listener, if you love the Self Care 101 podcast, please can you review it on Apple or Spotify. It really helps the show get discovered by other people and it lets me know that the show is helping you too. So let's do this. So why was I away? Well, God, I don't even know where to start, but basically in a very succinct, quick nutshell, I had been going through a very fierce period of growth within myself and my business. And quite honestly, I didn't realize that's what was happening. I actually thought I was getting frustrated by things not happening or the things I wanted to happen not happening. And actually, now that I'm on the other side of it, I realized that it was a massive period of growth and it was a massive step that was needed to have been taken. A lot of it came back to why I was doing what I was doing or why am I doing the work that I do. And I can certainly, you know, if you've listened to the podcast over the years, you'll notice the up and down around and arounds that happen as a business owner, I guess, as somebody who's worked through the pandemic as a parent and all of the rest of it. And I feel like I got into this year, 2022, with the the plan of fixing up, I think is probably the best way of putting it. I just wanted to fix up. I just wanted to make a real good go at the things that are important to me in my life. And the only way to do that was to get really clear about what it was that I wanted to work on and put a strong plan together to make it happen. But, you know, (laughs) best laid plans there were a bunch of other things that I didn't realize I was doing to myself that was keeping me small or keeping me disengaged with the things that really mattered with me. So I had to do a lot of inner work, hired my own coach, did some inner work. But actually the biggest catalyst, and I know this sounds like a shameless plug, but it's not. The biggest catalyst for me was going on the retreat that I hosted in Marrakesh back in June and coming away from that retreat really transformed myself. I thought that, you know, the retreat is obviously for my clients and transformations always occur and there's always, you know, there's always change and level up and pain and lots of wonderful things, but I wasn't expecting it to happen to me. 
and it did. And when I came back from the retreat, I was on this absolute retreat high that I've actually not come off of since I came back. And what I've done with that is made a lot of changes and good changes, you know, changes that needed to be done. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about all of that. So coming to my why, I feel like I've told you this before, but I'm not sure. But the reason why I got into, I guess, coaching as such was when Amy Winehouse, when she passed away, I was, I don't know why, but I was really struck emotionally by her passing. Now, I wasn't like the biggest fan. I mean, I did host one of her very first showcases when she had just been signed way back when, when I worked at a place called Dover Street. And so, but I didn't know her, you know, I didn't know her personally. I loved her music, but I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was a fan. I wasn't like going to every concert and performance and stuff like that, but I appreciated her and I appreciated that she was different and I appreciated that she did her own thing. And I appreciated that she wasn't the same as everybody else. I was really drawn to that. I think that's obviously down to the rebel in me. And when she passed, I was really upset, but more pissed off more than anything. I was really pissed off because I thought she was born to do what she did, right? She was born to sing the way she sang. She was born to be a different voice for our generation. And her passing really left me reeling a bit because I thought, you know what? She had all these people around her and the poor girl couldn't trust any of them. She couldn't trust anyone. Like she couldn't go to somebody for support. She couldn't say, oh, I'm not sure about doing this or I'm really tired. I can't do this or anything. And even if she did, these people just didn't listen. She, They just couldn't be trusted. And it really bothered me. And I thought, you know what she needs? She needs someone to like, just be there a non-judgmental, impartial support, which obviously I've later learned can be a coach. So I was like, okay, fair enough. And then, you know, I mean, this was way back when, what, 2011? And I thought 2011, maybe even later, but beside the point, she passed and that just sort of sat with me and I didn't really do anything with it. It just basically planted a seed, which I later found out was my calling. And then Whitney Houston and Prince, I mean, Prince was more about the music, you know, not having the rights to the music that he created. I was like, what is wrong with people? And then Michael Jackson, and and regardless of what you feel about Michael Jackson, you know, you can't dispute the talent. And that's really what I'm focusing on. People who are created in this world to do things, to do big things. I believe that we all have the potential to do big things. I believe we are all here for a reason. And whatever that reason is, we should at least explore it. And all these passings just really kind of hit me hard. And I thought, this is wrong. You've got these incredible people and there's no one really there to support them. And that was, you know, like I say, the catalyst, the planting of the seed that's led me into the work that I do. The pandemic's kind of been difficult to give that level of attention or support or energy even that I really love to give because I give very freely and I'm happy to give freely because it just it feels good if it doesn't feel good I don't give so when we got the chance to go to Marrakesh and do this retreat I was really I guess I was psyched up but equally nervous. I was actually quite nervous. I hadn't hosted a retreat for years. I was hosting a bigger retreat than I had hosted before. Now, don't get me wrong, I've organized events for hundreds of people, but doing an intimate retreat where you're in charge, (laughs) it all falls down to you. That was really quite unnerving. But I used that nervousness to really make sure that I had my... I guess um, I had all my ducks in a row (laughs) and I had a group of incredible women and one of the women was my bestie, uh, which was just magic in itself that she came, you know, when I first started my journey in coaching, she said to me, Fiona, her name is, she said to me, 
I'm going to come to one of your retreats. I was like, okay, great. And I just thought it was a supportive thing that she was saying. And then she turned up, she came and oh my God, it was brilliant. But more so, you know, having all these people there, these women who came, trusted me and, you know, wanted the break, wanted that time for themselves. And then they have these incredible transformations, which you can read more about on the testimonials page of my website. But each one had a different experience, had a different transformation. But a couple of things were similar. Everybody loved the fact that they didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to want for anything. They just needed to turn up at 7.30 in the morning. And then the rest of the day, I would just tell them where to be and when. And that was it. So that was great. The other thing that everybody said was how magical it was, or that I had magic. I mean, I probably do have some magic, but who knows what that is. But it was really nice that they all off their own back said magic. And I thought, wow, like, you know, no matter how much marketing copy I write, I would never say that it is magical to come on one of my retreats. I just not that person. <laughs> but if they say it and I can put it in speech marks, then it's okay. So magic was the word that was sort of resounding with everybody. And then the third thing, which obviously is my favorite, is that everybody loved everybody else. So when you're doing a group retreat, for instance, everyone kind of like worries about the other people that are coming, like age differences, gender differences, um, economic differences. And I always say there will be at least one person that you will connect with and if not you'll have me but it you'll be you will be fine and generally that everybody is fine and the differentiator is because the way I communicate and who I'm communicating to I'm only going to attract certain people and those certain people will naturally gravitate towards each other. So the fact that everyone could come together, create this new supportive community. I mean, the WhatsApp group is still running and it's still like we share the odd TikTok and funny memes and and we celebrate each other's successes. It's just beautiful and it's a great place to be. And after a retreat, everybody comes back and there's this retreat high, which lasts generally a week, sometimes two weeks. And then you're really back into reality and it can feel a lot harder. Some of the some of the women have continued to work one on one with me. So we've been able to manage that retreat um, high so that there's no come down as such. But life is still going to happen. And these are most of these things are out of our control. But the retreat high for me has been insane. I, like I say, I didn't realize how much I needed my own retreat, I guess. And I didn't do anything overtly when I was on the retreat. So I wasn't like making notes. I wasn't sort of, you know, creating a new spreadsheet you know, <laughs> for, for what I was going to do with my business. Nothing like that. I just, I, I just, I was just there. I was just present for that whole week. But when I came back, I knew that something had shifted in me and the shift. Now, I'm just going to give you it as a summary. I'm not going to give you the whole journey. But the shift was that I realized how I really am better in person, that the work that I do is more than coaching, is more than therapy, is more than like spiritual healing stuff. It's a whole combination of things. I still can't label myself. You know, I've talked about this before in a show, like I don't consider myself a life coach per se. There's more to it and you just got to experience it. You know, one day the name will come. But for now, that's what I'm saying. And even my clients, they didn't, they, they couldn't really put their finger on what it was that I was doing. So, oh, you know, there's something there. So I realized that there is something very special about what I do and, and how I do it, right? Which makes me obviously unique to myself. And then I was like, why am I not doing more with this? And how can I do more with this? What's What's missing? And just literally every night that I slept, I woke up in the morning with thoughts and ideas and there was a shift. One morning I woke up. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember this morning so vividly. But I woke up one morning after the retreat at home and I said to my husband, I said, Dwayne, do you know what? I don't give a anymore. I just don't care. I'm going to do this my way. 
I'm going to do it my way and I'm okay if I fail and I'm okay if things don't work, but I have to do it my way. And I've really got to own this, like hold me accountable, call me out. When you see me doing stuff that other people are doing, just tell me about myself because I need to do this. I need to do it my way. And sure enough, I started creating content for social media just with my, I don't give up voice, if you like. And the amount of people who have engaged with that kind of content has been insane. So I was like, oh, so I'm not the only one. I knew it. I knew I wasn't the only one. And sure enough, I'm not the only one. There are, I can't believe how many people in my communities, my various networks that feel the same way that I feel. And I was like, here we go. And then I was like really going into the whole change maker, right? Change maker process. Let's think about a change maker. Let's think about having an impact in this world. Let's think about being brilliant at what we do. Think about having a brilliant life. What does that look like? What's that going to transpire as? How can we really make that happen? Or when I went into it, I was, you know, doing my exercising, I was eating well, I was really balancing social and work and who I spend time with. I was analysing everything in my business down to a T. And then I decided, I decided this very dramatic statement, which I do say to clients too, but I really, really had to be dramatic and ruthless about it with regards to the business. And I said, if it doesn't bring me joy, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But I'm also, you know, someone who likes to give things a chance. So like my relationship with Instagram. <laughs> Luckily, I've been talking to a lot of people about Instagram and, and it's a consensus. But Instagram is frustrating. But I have 1700 people, maybe, who follow me on there. And they might want to see my content and they might want to stay connected to me. And I don't know how I'm going to be able to reach all of those people if Instagram doesn't allow me to. So I create the content and I was using the last couple of months as a testing ground to see what kind of content people are resonating with, what's working, what's not working and really pay attention. Like I normally do this, but this time I was going to be super analytical, super diligent about results and correlations and, and, and all that nerdy stuff. But at the core of all of it was if it doesn't bring me joy, I'm not going to do it. So I put together some posts that I felt happy about and scheduled them for the whole of August. Like I was totally in advance. I've planned my next two years of business in terms of my retreats and what I'm going to be doing and the kind of people I want to work with and what I'm going to do. And it feels really good, exciting and a bit scary, but it does feel really good to be that organized. And I'm going to tell you some of the successes that have occurred as a result of doing this. I have made some next level connections. Now, let me tell you, next level people that I have met and connected with, and we're going to be doing stuff or we're doing stuff, you're going to see. Next level, people that I would only aspire to know. And I'm making these connections, get this, just by being me. And I'm going to get into this in a minute. I have, and this is a little secretish type thing because we haven't actually signed the contract, but the contract is moving forward. <laughs> but I have been, I guess, selected to be one of the partners who can host retreats with the Six Senses Douro Valley in Portugal. Now, Six Senses is a world renowned wellness hotel, resort, spa group. And they were created, I think, around 2010 by somebody called Sonu, who now owns something very delicious in the Maldives. And he sold it to another company, but they've kept the brand ethos of well-being. They have a barefoot policy, like you turn up and they take your shoes away. Just love it. And I get to do one of my retreats with them in January. I'm so beyond amazed, right? And <laughs> I'm laughing because this is a big deal, right? In the world of marketing and partnerships and stuff like that, this collaboration is a big deal. Th these things don't just happen for anybody. This is a big deal. 
but it took one message on LinkedIn and then an hour and a half video call with the wellness director for Europe for us to make this happen. And it was purely down to energy and I guess attraction in terms of, um, you know, who each other is and stuff. And we just vibed and it just, everything was just flowing. And we were like, yes, let's do this and let's do that. And, you know, fast friends, if you like, but amazing. I have been given the opportunity to write a book, to write a book. I've always wanted to write a book and I'm now completely in overthinking of like, what's the book? What what is it going to be about? Should I make it like this? Should I write it like this? Maybe I should do this topic. Maybe I should do that. Maybe. So I'm like putting that on a hiatus. All of this is because, and this is tip number one, all of this is because I showed up just as me, honestly, just as me. And I realized by showing up as me, and this is what I recommend you to do to show up as yourself. You know who, who yourself is? It's you when you've had a glass of wine. You know when you've had a glass of wine, you basically take the edge off any um, highly strongness or, <laughs> you know, you take the edge off. It's that person. Obviously, I'm not condoning have a glass of wine before you do things, but it's that person. It's that you that shows up authentically as their best self, etc. But I was just like, you know what? You sound cool. Let's connect. Let's have a virtual coffee and let's see what we can do with each other. That's it. And you know what? It's a yes or a no. If it's a yes, great. If it's a no, also great because it doesn't matter. If it's no, it might be no for right now. It might be a hard no, but it will create space then for another yes to come through. But if you don't have the no, this is something my coach says, collect the no's because within within all those no's will be a yes, which is essentially if you're not putting yourself out there, if you're not going for the opportunities that you want, job roles, relationships, workouts, whatever it is, if you're not actually putting yourself out there, you're not going to get anything. I mean, I know that sounds really basic, but when you actually do it, from your core and from your belief system, honestly, everything flows and shows. Everybody can see it because it's energy, it's energetic, fierce, absolutely fierce. The second tip is that I really loved the analogy of, you know, when people say, um, what's the, what, what is it? It's uh, the phrase is that if there isn't a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Listen, bring your folding chair to everything in your life. Fail for yourself, not because somebody else couldn't see it. Okay. This is really important. And I'm really coming to you here personally, because the last couple of years have been really tough in staying true to myself, my goals, my purpose for my business. It really has been tough. So I'm on the other side of it now, and I'm going to scream it from the rooftops. Do not fail because somebody else can't see what you see. Trust me. At the end of the day, if your thing's going to work, it's going to work. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work. But fail for yourself. Do not do it because somebody else can't see your vision. Oh, I can't tell you that. Like, obviously you can tell how passionate I am about that point. But that tip is gold. And please, please, please take heed of it. Go for it go for it. Do you want to apply for a job that's 50k out of your current salary bracket? Bloody well do it. Don't listen to anyone who says, nope, stay in your lane. There is no lane. Your lane is your lane, okay? Your lane is the lane that you are in that will help you achieve your aspirations and your ambitions. It's your lane on your own. Doesn't include anybody else. So stay really true to yourself in that sense fail for yourself, not for anyone else, and bring that folding chair to every single conversation and opportunity you have. The third tip I know is something that I've talked about a lot, but I'm going to get granular. The third tip is about focusing. 
really, really focusing. Now, I thought I was focused for a lot of my work, right, for the last year or so. I thought I was really focused. Then I realized that I wasn't because there was this element of self-doubt that kept creeping in. And I'm quite a confident person, you know, sometimes to the point of obnoxious, quite bullshit, quite, I don't give a damn, I'm going to do it anyway. And I do that because I've just always been that way. That's just like, I don't know, that's my DNA. That's how I'm made up. But the last few years, because I was, you know, running my own business, there was a lot of doubt coming in from external noise. And at first, the external noise was literal noise. People actually telling me, why are you doing this? Why are you doing retreats? Why are you doing one-on-one? There's no business in coaching. There's no blah, blah, blah. This person failed as a coach. I was just like, shut up shut up. (laughs) And then I missed out the other noise. And the other noise is what you hear and see on social media. Honestly, I can't stress this enough. Social media is a hacking noisy place. And I have to say that there are a lot of people who are unqualified to say the things that they say. There are a bunch of coaches out there with no qualifications, no safeguarding experience, no association membership, nothing, no supervisor, no coach for themselves. And they are, you know, they've got these millions of followers and they talk a good game. And all I can see is you are going to hurt a lot of people. You are going to harm a lot of people. And it really drives me insane. But interestingly, that was driving me insane. And I actually managed to turn it around. So I turned it on itself. And it's now become my driver to ensure that my voice is heard, my different voice to them. And hopefully within that, people will be able to see the difference between a charlatan and someone who is genuine. So focus. Focus is when I post on social media, they say you can't post and ghost. Well, do you know what? I post and ghost. And I post and ghost because it's far too easy for me to start that scroll, right? Come on, we all do it, right? I start scrolling and then like, there's a couple of people that I'll see, you know, because they're in my favorites and I'm like, support them. I'm happy, you know, to do all of that. And then I'll start looking at nail varnishes and I'll start looking at makeup tutorials and I'll start looking at, you know, God only knows what. (laughs) And then it's like, you know, two and a half hours have gone by. I'm like, where am I? What am I doing here? That's two and a half hours of my life wasted scrolling social media when I could have been connecting with someone amazing. What's wrong with me? So Focus is so key and focus comes into, you know, the people that you spend your time with, obviously your distractions like social media, but people are a distraction too, you know, family, friends, people who aren't actually contributing to your path and and your values. So it's really important to look around you at all your distractions. An untidy house is a distraction, babe. Um, I don't know, things like your socks, you know, sometimes you we leave things like our socks. Oh, they've got loads of holes in. I need to buy new socks. And we keep forgetting to buy those socks. Get the socks. All those little things will niggle and take your focus away from what you want to do with your life. So if you are someone who does want to make a change within themselves, within the world, have an impact, wants to be brilliant at what they do, wants to live a brilliant life, you've got to really hone in on what focus means. Obviously, I've got three retreats coming up next year that will help you with this focus bespoke to you and your life. (laughs) On that note, what is coming up? Right, I want to try a little thing. I want to try a little communication with you directly. I have set up a what is it? It's a channel. Yes, it's a channel on Telegram, the app Telegram. Telegram is a great app because if I set up a channel, which is what I've done, then it kind of acts like social media in the sense that I broadcast a post, if you like, or a message, and then you guys can interact with that particular post. So say I posted this uh, episode, which is what I will do. 
then you can say, oh, I liked this point. I don't agree with you on this. And we can just have a chat. And literally, that's it. It's free. All you have to do is click the link in the show notes and you're in. Just like that. Because I feel like, you know, this has been a couple of years and part of this whole hiatus this time was because I felt like I didn't really know you and I want to know you (laughs) you know it helps because really I'm sitting here in my bedroom with the curtains drawn reading and talking reading not reading I'm talking to my laptop (laughs) it's a bit lonely so I'd love to talk to you so telegram app check the show notes I am also like I said, running three retreats next year. In January, 8th to 11th of January, we are going to Six Senses Dora Valley in Portugal. It's going to be so sexy. It's a three-night retreat. It is for you people in leadership, entrepreneurs, business owners, senior leadership roles. It's for you. And it's for you to plan out your year ahead. Then in June, 10 to 17th of June, we're going back to Marrakesh to Peacock Pavilions for a full-on rest, reconnection, rejuvenation. Oh, it's going to be so sexy. I can't tell you. It's too good. And then in October, oh, October's going to be a luxury, indulgent Italian retreat near Tuscany in a beautiful villa all to ourselves absolutely stunning. If you haven't already been to my website and checked out the retreats, please go there and have a look because they are insane and they're so good. So have a look at those. And then the third thing, which is probably the most important thing is, what was that? That was like the most pathetic drum roll ever. Anyway, (laughs) the name of the podcast is going to change in a couple of weeks. So when I started the podcast, I wanted to call my podcast my business name because frankly, coaching sounds great. Frankly, coaching, the frankly coaching podcast, I mean, but someone already had it. (laughs) And if somebody already has it, then we're competing with our search terms. So I didn't do it. Anyway, that person has now left the building so I can claim it. And so therefore, in a couple of weeks, you will see the podcast name change and the artwork will change as well. And we are going to be called the Frankly Unstoppable Podcast with me. (laughs) And I think it really signifies the changes and the growth that we've all been through. You know, it's not just me, you're on this journey with me too, I hope. So the content is going to be really geared towards change maker mindset, I think is the best way of saying it. So you're either a change maker, you're not a change maker. Well, I would say that you are a change maker. If you're listening to self-development stuff, you're a change maker. You want to make change, even if it's with yourself. What you change in yourself is going to affect the world. It's going to have an impact on the people around you. And then that has an impact on the people around them, the ripple effect, yada, yada. You get me. So the content's going to be really focused on change makers. I have got some next level interviews coming up on the show. As a result, I'm going to be interviewing Steve Jobs's assistant, one of Steve Jobs's like first assistants. I am going to be interviewing a couple of incredible authors and I'm not going to tell you anything else because otherwise I'll just tell you everything. So look, stuff is happening. It's all really good. And I'm really grateful for you. If you are still here, if you are still listening, if you are still supporting the show, if you are still leaving me a review on Apple, please guys leave me a review. (laughs) I'll buy you a coffee. Come on. I'm really, really grateful for your support. I'm grateful that you're here. I'm so grateful that you listen. And I really look forward to connecting with you on Telegram, connecting with you in any other way, and really taking us and our growth and our plans and our goals to the next level. Signing out now. Really cheers to our collective level up.